Everybody, it's Lane from White Pine Homestead. Hi, Mama. Hi, Lane. What are you up to? I am packaging this jerky we dehydrated. We've been doing a lot of dehydrating, haven't we? Yeah. Hey, everyone. While Lane is packaging up this jerky that we've been doing, I'm going to show you some other things we've been working on. We hope you enjoy today's video. So here you go. Hey, everyone. Hope you enjoyed seeing my little helper over there. He's helping me with some dehydrated jerky today, and we're going to see him again at the end of the video. But uh, yeah, he's a good little helper. I appreciate him very much. Obviously, today's uh, video is about what we're dehydrating and why, and uh, we've been kind of hard at it. It's one of my favorite ways of preserving, but this is the biggest time or year that I've ever done it a lot and really the biggest reason that I have focused on that is because well I don't have the root cellar of my dreams I hope someday that I will not sure how far off that is but someday but dehydrating things uh, allow you to just not have to have as much room to store things and I don't have to have a jar although I pretty much am putting them in jars as much as I possibly can I do have mylar bags I haven't actually used those yet um, things of that nature, but so we are dehydrating and canning, doing both. Uh, I just got done doing a bunch of meat actually here recently. I like that I can dehydrate and don't have to refrigerate. And although they should not be in like a super hot place, they have a little bit better flexibility when it comes to temperature and storage than say uh, your canned goods or things that would need to go into a root cellar. So, anyways, let's go over some of the things that I have been doing. 
uh, that we're just using in our family and I think you guys will be interested in that and if this is the direction that you're wanting to go in I'm going to share a couple resources that I have been using that uh, you may or may not want to look at so let's get started and uh, we don't eat fruit out of season so I bought 150 pounds of pears this year and we canned a bunch of those uh, plus we dehydrated them and the kids enjoyed and ate them as we went along uh, but now they have dehydrated pears to eat on until pears come out again and last year all we did was apples I'm not that's not true we did apples and a small amount of pears and I found my kids loved the pears more uh, although they're loving the apples this year they were a different kind of apple and they're a lot sweeter and so they're kind of enjoying both so far and then I just have jars that I fill up and keep in my kitchen and then I store the the excess in another location in the house so these are the apples we need to refill this because we're going through those rather quickly and then I did some apple chunks as well these were really sweet apples and so they're uh, they're not like super sticky but they definitely have a bit more um, last year's didn't do this at all so it's kind of interesting just the difference in apples so you might want to look into that as well if this is something you decide to do but I did the apple chunks to like add to like make apple fritters or something of that nature which I haven't done yet or I can add it to granola because we make granola things like that or just our oatmeal in the morning so that was the reason behind doing apple chunks which I haven't done before but I think that'll be fun we have orange slices lemon slices I'm sorry, lime slices and lemons. And people would say, well, why would you do that? Well, really, mostly I'm adding this to uh, drinks. That would be the reason that I'm doing this mostly is just to have some flavored waters and have something other than plain water. But what I'm more excited about is actually the orange peels. And what I, and I only did this off of uh, organic oranges, but the reason I did this is because I, dehydrated these I'm going to throw them in my Vitamix and I'm going to powder them and that powder because you, the, a lot of the vitamin C in an orange is really in the peel and the pulp and so I can add this to different foods I can throw it in like my homemade soaps to give it a nice orange smell things of that nature and I'm excited to, to use this this year this is my super greens that I have been making and literally any greens that we had this year, not all, we ate as we went along, but then all the extras that, hey, we can't consume this much in a week of what we have grown, we're gonna go ahead and dehydrate powder. So in this I have, oh, let's see, dandelion greens, carrot tops, the tops off the carrot tops, broccoli leaves off of our broccoli, uh, cauliflower leaves, uh, green leaf lettuce, romaine, lots of kale, whatever greens that we had, and people go, well, that's probably not gonna taste that great. Well. It might not if uh, if you just drink it straight. You can add, my goal is to add little bits of this to say the sauces that I'm making. So if I make a spaghetti sauce, I can throw a teaspoon of this in here and it is a huge amount of greens, but you won't really taste it. I could also uh, put it in a drink, a shake of some kind and add a little bit of stevia and I'll be all good. I'm not gonna taste it, but I'm gonna get the great nutrients. The other wonderful thing about dehydrating versus canning, although I'm not anti-canning, I'm certainly gonna to continue to do that, but I like to have the, uh, the versatility, is that you retain more of the nutrients in your dehydrated foods than you do in your canning, canned foods. So, something to think about. And then I canned, or I dried a ton of, they didn't have any other colored half gallon jars when I went to go buy them, um, of onions. This is 10 pounds of onions chopped onions so I had ordered uh, 20 pounds of organic onions through Azure Standard which is a, a drop organic drop ship company that I work with or that I like to order through and I ordered 20 pounds and I could put 10 pounds in each one of these jars so I thought that was pretty amazing that I just stored 10 pounds of onions in a half gallon jar let's see and some of these things are just kind of uh, these are just pineapples once again dried fruit to do whatever we want with. We also have dried mangoes. I didn't bring everything out. I'm just gonna give you guys kind of an idea of the things that we're doing. We have green beans, we have corn, green peas, mixed vegetables. And um, these I would use for um, like when I make chicken pot pie or if I'm just doing a soup or whatever I want to, but that's primarily what I'll use those for. 
Um, we have broccoli and I have cauliflower and things like that. Like I said, I didn't bring everything out, but just I want to give you an idea, an array of the things that we're doing. And people think, oh, well, what a pain and how do you rehydrate? And it's actually so simple. Actually, a pumpkin I'm getting ready to dehydrate. And then you re when you rehydrate it and you can make it right into a pumpkin pie or whatever um, uh, casserole or something that you want to make. Hey, Thanksgiving's coming up. I mean, it's just, it's just a great way to store things without refrigeration. To run the Excaliburs is actually a pretty minimal cost for each day if I'm running them all day. They actually are really affordable, so it's not that bad. So those are the kind of things we're dehydrating and uh, we're able to put a lot more in uh, small areas. Now, I will say that um, a lot, there's a little bit of extra work when you dehydrate because you have to blanch and get things ready. And what I have been doing to make my life a lot simpler, and I find it to be a lot more affordable to buy organic vegetables this way, uh, is often I just buy the frozen organic vegetables, like say at Costco or ordering through Treasure Standard or whatever the case may be, and I don't have to blanch, I don't have to do anything, I just open up that uh, frozen bag, throw it on my dehydrator, and let it go. And that's made my life extremely uh, simple to get those things done. So that's really, really nice. This lady right here I want to tell you about, her name is Tammy, I think it's Tammy Gangloff is how you pronounce this. This is the dehy Ultimate Dehydrator Cookbook, but she has a YouTube channel and a um, website called Dehydrate and then the number two store, dehydrate to store. And although her videos on her YouTube channel are pretty old, you can tell, it's not you know amazing. Uh, I think they're like 11 or 12 years old. They're very informative, they're wonderful. And she's created this cookbook and she does a ton of dehydrating and she just, her website and her YouTube channel have a plethora of information. And so if you are interested in going in that direction, I encourage you to check her out. She has this book. And she also has these quick and easy dehydrator meals in, uh, in a bag. She's putting them in Mylar bags and putting them away. You can put them in a jar, whatever way works for you. This is pretty cool because like she makes granola and I make my kids granola, but it only is so much and I have to make granola often. She has a recipe that's like 48 um, cups of oatmeal. Well, I already buy my oatmeal 50 pounds at a time through Azure Standard, so that's awesome. And I'm gonna use her recipe or at least look at that and maybe, you know, make my recipe bigger and then I can put it away in Mylar bags or glass jars, whatever the case may be. And I'm excited for that because then I don't have to make cereal as frequently as I do. And then let's see these other books. Um, these are kind of cool. These aren't particularly just dehydrated foods. They could be whatever dried foods you could be dehydrating. You might be purchasing some of these, but meals in a jar, quick and easy, just add water, homemade recipes. And then this one is specifically actually for a company um, called Honeyville. So Honeyville is a freeze-dried company. Um, and I really got this one just for the ideas. So you may or may not be interested in this, but they really specifically, the ingredients that they're calling for in these things are from that company. So, uh, but you don't really have to use that company. You could use whatever you wanted. So those are just things that we are up to and things that we are uh, doing still. I have a lot of things I put in the freezer that I hadn't had time to get to that now I can get out and dehydrate them. And uh, when I dehydrate in the summer, the dehydrators do you know, produce quite a, quite a bit of warmth. So I have to stick those outside, otherwise it'll really heat my house up. But in the winter it's awesome because I want it to heat my house up, so that's great. All right, let's go over and check on Lane and see what he's up to. I hope this information just kind of gives you an idea, gets your wheels turning, lets you um, think about ways you could be putting food up and or, or how you want to do. I just love the thought of quick and easy. Hey, quick and easy. That's what I need sometimes. So uh, if you have any questions, hey, put a comment below. I'd love to um, comment back and forth with you, throw out ideas, help other people by doing so. And uh, if this video was helpful in any way, like it, subscribe, and share, people. All right, let's go check on Lane. Lane, thank you so much for packaging all that up. I really appreciate it, buddy. Why don't you say goodbye to everybody? Bye, everybody, and see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye, everyone.